Greetings, everybody, and welcome to the Armorer. My name is Victor, as always, joined by Blue. Hello, hello. And we're taking a look at what happened at the last week of Nationals. Some spoilers for Bright Light, and last but not least, what was the gold foil that we opened on our nuts? So, looking at the statistics, there are six points left that are not distributed. The PTI Florence, PTI Portland, and PTI at the Philippines but apart from that what we can see is that Lexi managed to get 512 points out of the total 1118 throughout the season which at the moment leaves her at 900 26 926 so Lexi will be sticking around for ProQuest for sure and probably probably for the world championship yeah uh, this is kind of goes according to our predictions more or less we like the, the bet was basically if she wins US uh, nationals yep. there's a big probability that she will uh, rotate the season but ever since that did not happen it was fairly low probability that she will actually rotate uh, this season and she did not she's unfortunately it seems kind of far away enough that ProQuest season may not actually force her to rotate because ProQuest only give two points per win I think obviously it depends on how many ProQuests there are, go there are going to be around the world so maybe it's possible I don't know I really don't think because if you need to get what's that that's 74 points that's 37 pro quest wins I guess yeah. it is achievable yeah I, I guess it's it is possible right like national like the nationals were like how many uh, 43 nationals right so if if we assume that every country is going to have at least one pro quest and some are going to have two and more Multiple, yeah. yeah so like in about like 80 pro quests if she wins like 30 40 yeah it's, I guess, it's achievable I, guess I think it's achievable i believe there uh, has to be a ban and restricted announcement uh, that's coming on the 19th yeah. which is how many days from now like 10 days from now yep uh, i think i think They'll probably change nothing because once again they have said that they just want Lexi to uh, rotate out LL. and become living. Yeah, just become yeah. living legend. So and I, we can all forget about Tales of Aria and that entire set. And I don't know what will happen with all the boxes that are still available because it's widely available on the market that was overprinted, like vastly overprinted. Well, Tales of Aria. I mean. Uh, they're going to announce the Living Legend format uh, this world, so maybe it's going to gain some value there uh, if the format picks up and like every pro tour and so on holds uh, side events. Uh, but yeah, um, regardless, yeah, it's not mainstream. It's uh, yeah. In terms of who won uh, this uh, this last week, uh, predominantly Lexi, like uh, Canada. Hong Kong, uh, and I forgot who else. Like the majority of the nuts were won by Lexi. Greece was won by Greece. Ozuri, yeah, and with... most surprisingly was I, I believe Netherlands, with like a 96% event, uh, won by Bolton. Yep, that, that's probably the the big surprise from week three. But uh, to be honest, our predictions pretty much came came up to be true and Lexi gathered the most points surprisingly Briar's on second place with 160 points yeah I mean this mostly comes from like winning nationals at right? uh, 100 points from nationals uh, but uh, the biggest disappointment uh, remains Icelander we expected her to gather a few more points at the end of the day she won like two nationals in like Luxembourg and Sweden I believe and a PTI event yeah, uh, those are cold countries, and to be honest, <laughs> yeah, I would have, I would have really expected more. But again, we predicted this one as well. That's very consistent underperforming on Icelander's side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
uh, to be honest, I was I was uh, coping that like week three we're going to finally see Icelander winning, uh, but it turns out that like yeah, sure, some players have figured out how to beat Lexi with Icelander, but uh, but maybe that used to be just at the beginning of uh, the season, and now the Lexi players figured out how to beat Icelander uh, on the crackback in a way. Drumai also sticking only at like 102 points. It's not like a small amount by any means. Like it's it's a decent amount. Obviously, when you compare it to Lexi, right? Like. <laughs> yeah, but but Dromai never won something uh, like one of the events that grant a lot of points. So it was all small events. But in number, I think they're again a, a fair number. Yeah, yeah. Um, so probably yeah. this will be the next deck that we will be complaining about once Lexi is gone. Yeah, there's currently a lot of people complaining about Dromai. Uh, I don't really get it, like Dromai has some very clear weaknesses in my opinion and ways to exploit Apart her. From ice. Apart from ice. I mean, you can attack the dragons, they trigger on hit effects, she suffers against ninjas, she suffers against a lot of poppers. Like, she has ways to play around it, but it's not like it's easy. Anyway, uh, in terms of stats for our nationals, uh, we ended up being 26 people uh, this this time. Yeah, and, and thanks for everyone that watched our live stream. And yep. this is the moment for us to apologize that there was actually no final, because the thing is that Blue and another friend of ours they they reached the final and they yeah. never actually played the game. Here's your part where you can explain to the people why and what and when and how. Well, I mean, basically me and the, the friend of mine, we're basically a team. We just ended up on the in the finals and we just decided to, to split the pricing because it was very late at night already and we're traveling from a nearby city and uh, like we, we couldn't get home so we we had to sleep outside but yeah it was it was worth it and we were just um, very very tired and we just decided to to split the final and uh, we basically gave him the win so the winner at our nationals is uh, bravo actually for the third year in a row it's bravo year in a row yeah it's amazing every year i don't know what's going on no matter what the matter is it's just bravo yeah i mean we're just a very bravo country uh but in terms of in terms of the the meta split uh of the overall 26 players we had uh uzuri and drumai with like the highest representation uh to be honest i did not expect so many uzuris but it seems i it seems like they they came out uh, well apart swinging. from me and you Apart from me and you, the, the two other Uzuris were like last minute calls because both players, I wasn't certain that they will show up for the Nationals anyways. We know that the other Victor plays Uzuri and Nikki was an absolute wild card. We, we never had a, a, an idea if, he, if he'll play or not and he came with his own uh, like oh, bro homebrew deck. It was his idea, it wasn't even net deck. It was it was fun. So yeah, we got four, fun. Four, Uzuris. four Uzuris. Four then we have four Dromai. Three Icelander, three Lexi, and actually even more surprisingly, three Levia. Yeah, three Levia players. Uh, and we even had a Levia mirror, <laughs> which was uh, sad they wasn't on camera, but, but, but it was a fun moment. Uh, and then we have three Dash, uh, two Bravo, two Katsu, one Briar, and one Sir Bolton. Um, it was a very diverse meta, as I said in the in the box opening video. A lot of different decks. Yeah, a lot of different decks. Uh, in terms of uh, top eight, who who got to top eight was one Dash, one Drumai, one Bolton, one Katsu, uh, two Lexis, one Uzuri, and one Bravo. So basically, the and Uzuri was diverse. me. Yeah, and my friend was playing Bravo, uh, and we had two Lexis. So that's very good conversion actually right it, out of out of three lexis unfortunately they had to play against each other in top eight yeah and about about that top eight it was again we have two lexis of course the the most represented deck but uh, apart from that 
very very diverse and I'm, I'm very happy with, with what happened and, and yeah. the variety of, of decks actually when it comes to the yeah, yeah. sorry uh, yeah I was going to just say that uh, we said about how like the Netherlands was very surprising with uh, Bolton winning but to be fair at our nationals our Bolton was like 6 all in the Swiss right like he yeah. he he three old the the Swiss with Bolton then he uh, three old the draft with Bolton again yeah he three old the draft with Bolton again and I believe he he won his top eight match and then lost to the Bravo in top four. Yeah, he reached he reached the semi final, so shout out to Petella. He yeah. made it. And also I, I think we should stop calling Benny a friend. It just shout out to Benny, our new national champion. Yeah. Uh, well deserved, well deserved. So in terms of the draft, here at the stats we had eight prisms, two of which went to top eight. We had five Leviathans, one of which went to top eight. We had four Boltons three of which went to top eight we had eight chains two of which went into top eight and that's yeah. that monarch draft i love it but i have a feeling that you're not a fan i i'm, I'm absolutely not a fan of monarch draft uh to be honest uh this this draft was uh probably the most balanced monarch experience i've had uh the bolton deck i drafted i was very happy with it was uh, it was very just generically good. Like I, I didn't want to um, go too much into the the light charging cards and just go for charge a card pass if my opponent does not block. Uh, so I was just playing very efficient things, and we we ended up playing like the the draft uh, final in a way with our uh, other bottom player in a bottom mirror uh, on camera, uh, and it was a pretty pretty close game. But yeah, overall, I don't really enjoy Monary Draft just because of how swingy uh, certain cards are. We had one of the chains uh, draft dimensional gateway or something like this that basically does two arcane damage every turn. Uh, and that's ridiculous. Thankfully for me, when we played, he banished it off of uh, his chain ability off of the shackles. So unlucky. Unlucky. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, but, but apart from that, his deck was uh, extremely strong. I, I looked at it. He had Sonata Arcanics, he had the Dimensional uh, Gateway, and he had the Shadow of Ursa. So, pretty strong, majestic slot. Yeah, I mean, he it was an insane deck. Uh, sadly, he never managed to get to the how we call it the site. He yeah, never yeah. got that weapon, but but the side's insane in draft. Yeah, well. I mean, yeah, I mean the the side, the side is what I do not like about uh, about monarch draft, right? Because there's other side like cards that are basically just a free win. Uh, Luminaris, looking at you. Yeah, Luminaris, like even Raiden is uh, very very valuable if you manage to draft like a, a good amount of charge things with like buffs and go against just free three damage every turn. Um, but yeah, via the Vanguard is very, very strong. Via the Vanguard, the, the, the chain specialization is insane, especially against uh, heroes that light are, heroes. Yeah, that have cards in their soul. That said, there's one thing that I really hated, and that was the way the pods were decided. Because we were 26 people, and instead of having one pod of eight players and three pods of six players each, we had two pods of eight and one pod of ten players drafting with 10 players is a nightmare it's very unbalanced because you know one box supports eight player draft yep. and when you had to add additional boosters that in this case the like six boosters you don't know what will be in those six boosters and which class it will support because the idea originally is that the cards in one box are fairly balanced in order to get like a nice draft experience yeah, so but I mean the same. The same goes with guy. six people, right? Uh, with six people, with six people, you have you have classes that are like underrepresented because of like less boosters on the table, uh, less packs on the table, basically. But yeah, I, I mean, it's it's bad either way. And the other thing is that uh, you are supposed to play against people in your pod only. When when it comes to limited play, you're not supposed to play. For example, if you're in pod three and you were the only, I don't know, chain on the table to get like the greatest deck and then go to play against someone that was in yeah. pod one, which were the people with better results, where obviously people know how to draft and how to play and what to do. And the decks there were fairly balanced. So you get like a 
top deck from the lower tiers of, of drafting and then you come and beat the people from from the top board it, it that's not okay as well yeah i don't know but because um then again you can make the the claim that uh it's also not fair for you to uh, be like ninth basically and be on the quote-unquote worst spot and then just sweep the worst spot and like automatically be like second in swiss or something like this without having to contend with the better players uh but yeah i, I mean all of these problems are solved if we just remove fucking draft from uh, nationals and i'm that's not it. certain you can say fucking on spin but we're not monetized so i guess fuck it yeah uh, yeah okay <laughs> Uh, Brilliant. So that was about us uh, and the gold foil. Yeah. The gold uh, foil was a surprise to everyone. Yep. The gold foil, uh, I believe we'll have a reel later and I may include a, a video in between the segments. But yeah, I guess you see the gold foil. Ah! <laughs> И няма да казвате, няма да пишете, за да го качим на видео, да гледат видео. Да, 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 Ta-da! Yay! Wow, do, do you first want to talk about the the big drama this week? Or like, maybe it's already past week, but we couldn't talk about it because we, we had to prep for nuts. Uh, yeah, about I mean, it's not, it's not a missing drama. Missing triggers. Absolutely, it's fucking common sense. When you played Pamo or when Pamo's played against you, you discard a card. I mean, just be the proper person do the right thing just follow the, the trigger you know what the card does <laughs> i mean it's it's straight yeah. up i don't know if, if, if it's even sharking it's just i don't know scumbagging uh, yeah I, I think i think both are uh, in a way the same uh, there have been a lot of takes on this uh, the majority you end up it's it's like yeah sure it's kind of allowed by the rules to do this, but uh, you shouldn't. Especially uh, on camera. I, I mean, it, it doesn't matter if it's on camera or not, right? Uh, in it my does, opinion... because then you got the entire community against you. Yeah, but like, does it really matter if the rules are not against you, right? Because you can just say, well, I'm just a competitive person, I want to win and so on. Uh, in my opinion, um, we should just or like at least lss should just uh, update the rules uh because like missing triggers and so on is obviously fine and you should know what your cards are doing uh but having because a lot of people in the community were saying things like uh maybe he didn't know what pomo does like maybe i don't know what pomo does and so on and so forth and uh, in some no games way in hell. Yeah, no way uh, in, hell in some that. games they have this thing where they uh, they assume, or at least, yeah, they, they, they assume that if you are attending a pro event, uh, you should be uh, responsible to know what uh, the, the cards do, right? Like, it, it, it makes no sense for you to just uh, attend a pro event with, like, zero knowledge of how the game plays, right? Because... I can, like, what, what if I just say, well, turns out I just do not know the rules of Flesh and Blood. And then I have to, like, call a judge for, like, the basicest things, like, every now and then, right? It just... It feels very exploitative. Uh, because, especially when you, when you know that most people, when they're playing together, uh, all of these things are assumed right like when 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 we play together i don't have to tell you pomel hits you and you have to discard the card and so on you know like i don't know i don't know yeah it's... like I, i'm obviously missing some uh, context of like what really happened and so on and people say like 
the Katsu player was fine with it and so on. And, and I, I, I don't really care about the specific event. Uh, I just think that you as a player attending a pro event should be responsible for knowing uh, what cards do. Uh, like you uh, should know Pomo better and so than on. Yeah. yeah, of course. So that's that's basically my take. Brilliant. So moving onwards to some spoilers. Very excited about the assassin card. Car, I'm saying card because I don't think that the arms are that exciting but then again it remains to be seen because we don't know what will happen i'm i'm on the i'm on the opposite opinion but uh sure uh do we start with already dead or shriek razors already dead yeah i love the artwork it's it, it's amazing and i think that another popper is nice considering that drama is on the rise and it defends for three which is okay uh, Non-action cards might not be the greatest thing, but then again, you can remove a D-React from the chain if you somehow manage to get this to hit with a shred or like a, another yeah. reaction. I think, so I think the, the idea of already that is uh, removing equipment, uh, if possible, right? Like just banishing equipment off the chain, uh, hindering your opponent even more. Uh, if someone is brave enough to defend with equipment against this card, obviously yes. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, the idea is that you're probably playing this in, in Uzuri, right? And they will know, they will have no idea that this card is coming. Uh, in that case, it's nice. Um, to me, and at least for like my playstyle and my deck, I may make a video later, or at least we'll have the deck lists in the description. Uh, for my for my playstyle and my style of deck, um, this card is too niche for me to use at least for now like i'm not too excited uh, but i do have to say that uh, a lot of people were using uh, things like nourishing emptiness uh, and uh, amnesia just as a yeah. six power three block cards and already exactly. that is just a straight upgrade to those yep and uh, uh, just to be honest i am one of those people because i'm playing the blue zuri but yeah. on the nuts i played uh, your deck I had no I idea to be honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I played, I played the contract with Zuri, and that's the thing because most of the most of the material so far in the articles that I've seen, and everyone's talking like on podcasts and whatever, but already dead, and everyone's saying that's a Rakni support. It's not a Rakni support. A Rakni is no good. I mean, it's all Uzuri. That's the only viable yeah, assassin uh, at the moment, in my opinion. Yeah, like the the thing is that uh, until it says uh a rachni specialization it, it's just going to to be usable in azuri right because in my opinion at least just the the contract build of assassin is just better in azuri simply because you have the added uh, option and versatility of using the stealth cards uh together with uh, shakedown and cnc and so on the uh, element of surprise yeah and next we have Shriek Razors, a Assassin Equipment. Uh, this kind of finishes the cycle of Assassin Equipment that you can buy back with two silver. Uh, it doesn't. And you, don't have a, you don't have an armor piece that you can buy back with silver. You do, you do. From Outsiders, the, ones that, the one that reduces your attack reactions by one. The, the sh red, red back shroud or whatever. Yes, yes, yes. That, that purchasable, is it? Yes, yes, yes. So it's just that that card's so bad. <laughs> Nobody plays. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, just no a straight downgrade from uh, Tunic, but uh, I guess for budget reasons it's uh, it's playable. Um, Shriek Razor has an attack reaction for two resources. Uh, you destroy it and then target attack action card defending an assassin attack gets minus one. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this, right? Um, in a way, it's a mini worse shred that you can play off of your equipment and you can kind of reuse it and uh, continue making your opponent have to like over block with one uh, every time they every time they see you hold a card in your hand uh, but then again do you really want to hold a card in your hand every time you do this uh, yeah and i'm not sure also another positive is that you can obviously destroy temporary equipment uh, you can't though, because it says uh, target attack action card defending an assassin attack. So you can only put minus one to attack action cards. Uh, so you, you can't even put minus one to a defense reaction. Yeah, uh, it was it was the already dead one. 
that I can yeah, do that. Yeah, so yeah. obviously, yeah. Again, no. That not excited about this card at all. Yeah, I I think it may find its niche niche uses, uh, but right now I feel like Flick Knife just gives you a lot more. Uh, right, because it, it actually deals damage, it can deal two damage, it can deal with uh, ward uh, from your opponent's side uh, if like Prism ever becomes good, or, like if uh, Druma yeah, is but using but the, the ward card and bad. so on. That's the saddest part, because against Druma you want to have two daggers in order to clear rush wings. So whenever you have to come to an AB equipment, you would always switch the gloves. Because you don't want to lose your legs, you don't want to lose your head, and you don't want to lose your tunic, obviously. Um, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, but even then, I mean, it feels like Flick Knife just has more uses uh, right now. Uh, so oh yeah, yeah certainly, certainly. Um, right, so that, that, moving forward to the interesting... Smashing performance. Cards. Yeah, this is the second brute card that we get in like this arena uh, that we're seeing. Uh, maybe this is a hint for like the Savage Land set. I guess we'll see when the time comes. I'm guessing the one that's coming in Q1, the the draftable set, must be related to the Savage Lands. Uh, it it may be. Uh, but I honestly, because you know that there's this there's this theory about the back of each and every. Uh, flesh and blood yeah. card, but where like, you go the through tier the is like very, very floppy, right? Because like Matrix used to be like at the end of the wheel, and now we're going to Matrix, and people are like, the still don't just reset the wheel. I don't know. Like I, I don't, I don't really uh, believe in that. Um, let's say. But about the card, it's when this attacks, draw a card and discard a random card. If a card with six or more is discarded this way, destroy a random item in the arena. And it's a yellow 3 cost 6 attack that does not block. And um, I honestly like it. Um, it seems like just a better version of the Arc Smash card. Because this is an actual attack, right? Like it's an actual 6 power card yep. that can push damage and then just uh, almost unconditionally destroy a item. Uh, like the random, the item is random, but a lot of decks will like run one item, uh, or like will run like one item multiple times. So it like doesn't really matter. Well, you you, you don't really know because the thing is going to bright light and mechanologies. You know that they yeah, use yeah, several I'm, items. I'm talking you got about that the pounder. Yeah, they're talking about other decks. Right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right. that that's true. Uh, to be honest, I would have like really love the card if there was a defense value on it yeah but um it, it's possible that a defense value on it would have made it just a must play always like you would just play this card regardless of what's going on uh simply because of, of this utility while now there's like at least some trade-off yeah yeah so i guess there was a reason even though like brute is not like an amazing class anyway uh, right now. Not in Classic Constructed now. Yeah. Uh, then we have Wax Off. And I think this is coming in the face of all people that were saying there's no ninja support, there's no ninja support. Here's your ninja support. Mind you, it's not great, but it's ninja support. Yeah. In Bright Light. I mean, it's not great, but I do I do love it. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a defensive combo of Wax On. Uh, which was a, a, yeah. a, a card that's uh, a zero uh, defense reaction that gains plus two armor if it's blocking something with zero cost, I believe, mm -hmm. on the red version. And then we have Wax Off. If you play it after Wax On, create a Zen State token. And the Zen State token is actually a little busted, right? Like it prevents every instance of one damage that you take during the turn. And it stays for two turns, I believe. It it does. It says while wax on is defending an attack action card with cost zero, it has plus two. But <clears throat> the blue react defends for one, the yellow for two, and the red for three. Yeah. To be honest, I feel like 
if um, if we ever get some sort of a more defensive uh, Katsu uh, or if um, we have a, a, a new Chirius type of deck like how Chain and Briar used to be uh, using Waxon. How Dromai is at the moment. Yeah. But I mean, she's she's not really using a lot of zero costs. That's that's the thing. I mean, she unless, is. yeah. I mean, when you look when you look into the Empress thing. Yeah, the Empress. Rubble, I can I can agree with the Empress, right? Yeah. Or, uh, snatch. But I, I don't think uh, you need help against uh, Dormai when you're playing Ninja. To be honest. I don't know, but but the thing is that they're trying to switch the playstyle of the ninja quite a lot because ninja used to be all about like aggro, a lot of attacks, small attacks, death by a thousand cuts, that sort of thing. Yeah, then it, it still were... is. I think they're just giving them options, and I think if if you're going to play against uh, something like Chirius Briar and you're going to include Wax on as a red defense reaction instead of your usual um, flick flux, flick flux because it's just more efficient. Uh, it's going to cost you absolutely nothing to just play Wax off as one of your blues because it's a zero cost, it's a blue, and it just has the added utility of uh, giving you a Zen State token that can block uh, the random one arcane damages. Uh, the like it can, it can block a lot of things, and it stays for two turns, and you can like now gain it during your opponent's turn, so they can kind of be less prepared about it in a way. I don't know. I, I like it as a card now. How usable we would be? I have no idea. Probably, probably not a lot. Like it's it's going to be niche at best. Remains, to, yeah, it remains to be seen. But the Zen State indeed is a really insane token. Uh, it's a really nice aura, and the thing is that we're not very used to it or playing against it or with it because there, there are not that many ways to to create it. But if it supports yeah. that one, yeah, and the help. ways the ways to create it are relatively hard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next we have Tome of Imperial Flame, a draconic action, zero cost. Draw a card. If you are a royal, instead draw two cards. You may pitch two red cards if you don't banish your hand. Search your book for your emperors. I think this is coming to blitz. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Pretty much gives you the two Never resources that you this. need. Yeah. It gives you the two resources that you need to play that command and conquer that you can search. Yeah, and it basically gives it to you for free. Yeah, this card is insane for an Emperor. Um, some people were, ex were uh, experimenting, and we'll definitely experiment with like Royal Dormai and... Uh, oh, certainly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mostly. Using this storm. I'm not too hopeful for the results of like this storm in Dormai. I'm not sure she really needs it. I'm not sure she really needs the Royal uh, Helm as well. But in Blitz and Temper, like this, this almost seems like an auto include, right? Like it even has go again, so it's basically it's just insane, yeah. actually. It is. It, it is a very strong card, and when you say the Royal Helm, that's a Crown of uh, Dominion. Yeah. It went up quite a lot, which gets me uh, to think I really should start doing that market watch series. I don't know. Tell us in the comments below if you would enjoy looking at market watch series or not. Yep. Definitely. Moving onwards, extremely fantastic art. I love the full art of this one. Warband of Bellona. Action for two resources. Destroy this. The next time you attack this turn, you may charge your hero's soul. If a yellow card is charged this way, draw a card and go again. Sounds like Bolton. Yeah, I mean, it's a light warrior equipment, right? So it's, it's the only it's light warrior that only we have. Bolton. Yeah. So it is a. It, I think it's a very useful piece. Um, it is it is a temper equipment that blocks for two, so it's like baseline very useful. Now, how how useful the action really is, I have no idea, right? Like it can technically help you charge whenever you do not have charge enablers in your hand, uh, but it's going to almost cost you a card. Like if you charge a yellow card, you're going to regain the card that you pitched. So. I don't know. I think I think it's just it's just nice utility uh, slash versatility slash like safe for rainy days. Uh, but then like you still have the base of just block three. Exactly. Uh, if it's, you, if it, it blocks it blocks everything that you want to block. 
and you just change a card in your hand and your charge so it helps you with charge this is pretty much everything both at once yeah it pushes him even more into this uh, play a ton of yellow cards uh, style well, if it's not for him, the new Fable would be unplayable, Light of Soul. Apart from Bolton, I don't know who's gonna play it. Prism's not gonna play it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh... Next... About the, the Tunic reprint, do you think the Tunic will be non-foil, or they will, for the first time in history, reprint a rainbow foil? Because their policy on reprints, uh, we will never reprint a cold foil. But they've never said anything about rainbow foils. I guess we'll see. Um, I feel like maybe there's no reason for them to print it at like Rainbow Foil, seeing how they printed it in non foil. In Crucible of War, and they reprinted it and in HP1. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, in my opinion, it's going to remain non foil, uh, but we'll see. Uh, something for like the inevitable market watch is that actually uh, Tunic's price has been going down, uh, and it will probably continue going down. Uh, when like the the bright light set starts to be opened so now's the time to get your tunic and by the way the other thing that was going down now is going up that's the crown of providence it was very low uh, i was looking at, at the states market it went down to like i don't know 60 dollars which is yeah. insanely cheap but now it's on the move again and it's climbing up yeah 60 60 was way too cheap right because that was the the price of arcanite's coke up I was like, okay, I'm going to buy a couple of copies of these, and then I went on card market, and in Europe it never went below 80, so, and that's 80 euros, which is different. Yeah, yeah it is, it is definitely different. Uh, lastly, we have like three new Mechanologist cards, uh, promos from somewhere, not sure where. Um, anyway. Uh, probably buy a box, I don't know. Yeah, probably buy a box. Uh, they're like three protocols so let's start with the red one uh it's demolition uh it's three resources three block seven damage all of them have evil upgrade which upgrades the ability for every evil you have equipped when this attacks a hero remove all steam counters from up to x equipment items and or weapons uh, the opponent controls where x is the number of evils you have equipped uh, so this is basically a mechanologist, anti-mechanologist card. Yeah, it's for the mirror. Yeah, it's for the mirror. Uh, it's going to be very uh, interesting uh, using this card, I believe, in, uh, in in the sealed format, in draft and so on. It's maybe going to be a powerhouse. Um, like the flavor of this card kind of leads me to believe, or at least to hope, um, that like the third mechanologist is going to be kind of like an, an evil scientist guy, kind of opposing uh, Tekwu. I guess we'll see. Yeah, because oh, what do we know in terms of heroes so far? We got Tekwu Volsen. That's that's uh, yeah. Father. We have we have uh, Tekwu Volsen uh, confirmed, and we're speculating on a new dash. Uh, and we know there's going to be a third one. I believe that. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Uh, then we have Pulse, Pulse Wave. Wave. Yep. Yeah, Pulse Wave Protocol. That's an evil upgrade again. When this attacks a hero, they reveal X cards from their hand, where X is the number of evils you have equipped. Choose an action card with defense less than X, then add it to the to this chain link as a defending card. Yeah, mm. these uh, the, the, this seems like um, just an evil version of uh, Pulse Wave Harpoon, right? It even has like yeah. almost the same name. Now with like the the evils we have right now, which is like we only really have one evil, which costs like four resources, and that's quite expensive. Uh, it seems to me that uh, the Pulse Wave uh, protocol is going to be harder to set up. Uh, then Pulse Wave Harpoon, but I guess we'll see, we may be having like a, a lot cheaper evils uh, when the set actually comes out. There they should be, they should be. And and the next one again, when you said Pulse Wave Harpoon, now we're looking at Magnetic Shockwave, now we have the Magnetic Protocol. Yeah, and it's basically the same effect, right? The defending hero must defend with uh, X equipment they control with minus one counters if able, where X is the number of evils you have equipped. 
So this is a little bit better because it forces them to block with equipment with one with minus one counters. Yeah, gets gets rid of all the battle wall and 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 temper. Yeah, it gets rid of the temper. Yeah, um, that's that's good. Yeah, I think I think this card is probably going to to see play uh, if you're going to be running a mechanologist with like evils uh, because it's it's a blue block tree, right? Uh, it's yeah. the most inoffensive stat line uh, in in the game. So it's it's interesting. Yeah. yeah, what's interesting? Tell us. Um, to me, the interesting part was that all of these are three cost, and it seems like they are going to be fitting in a mechanologist, uh, very much unlike Dash, right? Like someone who's maybe playing a card or, or two a turn, someone who's trying to set up uh, a whole lot of evils on top of him, that that are maybe then going to allow him to go crazy, but until then he's just going to be like a a one card for seven type of guy. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, but what I was going to say that I don't know what the rarity of these cards is because the thing is they are all promos, but I'm guessing they're at rare. These are not majestics. Uh, yeah, these are. They may even be commons, right? Like, I don't know. We, we I guess we'll see. They may be majestics. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, okay. I mean, the the bannerets uh, that we got from like the skill dawn. Uh, turn out to be Majestics, right? No, we... well, the ban red that our buy box promo were rares, and you got Majestics for one of the events, like a calling or, ah, okay, or whatever. Okay. Those were the, the Majestic promos, those were the only Majestic promos, and everyone said that they better stop doing that because you don't want to have Majestics on promos for an event because you literally just sign up for the event and, and you get them. Yeah. Yeah. Moving now, to the yeah. equipment. The the equipment. Um, I think uh, it's it's old news, right? I believe we covered it. Um, uh, it's basically the the base equipment the base. that you need to put your evils on top of. Uh, and you have like two sets. One is like Teku, the other is Proto. The difference is that the Teku has one armor, but it has blade blade break. Yeah, so, so if you decide to block with it, there's nothing to build on top with. Yeah, like if I have to be honest, the proto the proto equipments may end up being better, because like, can you imagine? Can you imagine playing like the the techlo the techlo base uh, into like a mechanologist and they just start up with like triple T bone and just you, you just lose your entire equipment slots exactly like all magnetic shockwave yeah as a chain link third or fourth or whatever yeah it can be pretty devastating uh, right so we covered all the spoilers yeah all the spoilers uh the drama the yeah, the, the nationals <laughs> report in a way uh our nationals as well and, uh, right, so all we're left with is to come up with the Market Watch segment and starting next week, that um, I'm guessing we'll have like a video like this every every week so we can even include that one as well. Yeah, I mean, we're doing our best at that, so. Yeah, perfect. So thanks everyone for watching. As always, comment, like and subscribe and we'll see you at the next one. Bye bye.